Here's what we got today, guys. A little 40 by 60 pad we're pouring. She's five inches thick. This building is 60 by 80, guys. We're pouring half of it. Biscuits gassing up the power trowels. We got Mike here today. Give us a thumbs up, Mike. Two thumbs up. Yeah, hey, baby. Up yeah, pop, baby. Right? Ooh, Frank's here today. What's up, buddy? He worked all night, too, didn't he? He worked all night. It's still dark out, too. Sun's coming up. Stay tuned. Here comes the mud. Big Rob on the truck from Circle T. I tried to get his attention. He could have drove in, but he wants to back in, I guess. Mm hmm. I was screaming your name. I go, turn around. Hey guys, Bondo here. So if you're new to my channel, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for clicking on that thumbnail. If you return to my channel and you're a subscriber, thanks for the support. Um, what we're doing here, guys, is pouring this 40 by 60 slab out for a buddy of mine. Um, all the guys here today are just helping out. Um, we didn't charge um, my buddy anything for doing this work. He's helping me out um, building a dump truck. So let's talk about what we're doing here, guys. We got a conveyor truck, and we're dumping out the first truck. It's got about eight yards on it. And you can see, I'm going to slow the video down here in a minute. But right out of the chute, you can see that this concrete's really wet, guys. I don't like to pour concrete this wet. And there's a little bit of plasticizer in this, which helps um, make the concrete flow, but not a lot. So I'll slow it down here, right here in a minute, and you can kind of see right here. Just pay attention to the guys as they're puddling, which is raking the concrete along. You can see how wet this concrete is. So... This is going to create a problem when we finish this floor. And I'll kind of show you here in a little bit when we hit the second truck what that's going to look like. Because the second truck and the third truck were really good. The concrete came in good. I asked for a five and a half to six slump. And um, I can't tell you, this is probably an eight slump. Right there, you can see Danny, my buddy Danny, right there with the. Um, yellow gloves on as he's petting that concrete how loose that concrete is you see Matt there um, bending over with the mag in his hand you can see that stuff is really loose um, my son there big biscuit we call him he's in the background with the red hat yellow shirt he's puddling it down with that come along guys just breaking it down and it's really stuff is pretty much self leveling which this isn't good this uh, does a few things to you um, first of all, it makes the concrete not as strong, having all that water in. And as you can see here, we're pouring on a vapor barrier. we got a 6 mil vapor barrier down. So this is going to take a long time to dry. So that just lengthens your day. And another thing that it's going to do is when we pour out the next trucks, if they get that slump the way we want it, we're going to have to blend because this concrete here isn't going to dry as fast as the, you know, the 6 slump that I wanted. So... You can kind of see, that's me on the, um, on the Tremi guys, the tube there pouring the concrete out. I'm doing that. And uh, the guys are pulling the wire up here. Um, there, there's a guy there in the blue shirt with the brown pants. He's got that hook in his hand. See him walking around there. All his job is is to pull that wire up. That's all he's doing. So um, you wire mesh policemen out there, you can't arrest me on this one because uh, we actually pulled the wire up. I'm showing you here. Yeah, you walk on the wire, guys. It's it's inevitable that you're going to pull it up and you're going to walk on it. But the stones in the concrete will actually hold it up. You know, not It's not going to hold it up to the top or in the middle, but it's going to get up in the concrete there. So that helps the strength. This is 4,000-pound concrete. Um, normally, when we pour it a little thicker, 
yeah, it would hold the wire up better than this stuff here is. But in a minute, you're going to see, we're going to dump this whole truck out here. And uh, I'm just keeping it going slow so you can see what's going on with how wet it was. But we'll speed it back up. And I'll show you the second truck, how nice that concrete was. So, you know, you want your concrete consistent from uh, truck to truck. And that's going to make your job finishing it a lot easier. You can see uh, my son, Big Biscuit, and Mike there. Mike's uh, leveling out with with Big Biscuit putting wet pads in. What they're doing guys is they got they're putting just just leveling out a spot on the concrete. We have a laser level so they, they'll set a wet pad at grade so that laser level will show them where the top of the concrete needs to be and they're going to use this 16 foot screed and just pull it along. You can see they're going real gentle with that screed stick when they're pulling this off because the concrete's so wet. We actually just left this concrete alone for a while. We didn't try to get in there and um, screed it off too soon. We just kept moving. Normally we might go back and screed this off. You can see the power screed sitting there. We didn't even end up using that. We just ended up pulling it off by hand. Um, Mike and um, Matt pretty much pulled the whole thing off by hand. I was uh, pretty much putting concrete in with the truck and keeping everything moving. We had plenty of help here guys. Like I said, these are all buddies of mine, and uh, everybody's friends with Daryl, and we're all friends, and we're just helping him out this day. He bought this house, had this big um, 60 by 80 barn in it, so we're going to pour half of it for him so that he can uh, run a wall down the middle, and I think he's going to make a, you know, have this as a shop and try to heat it. So that's what's going on here. So stay tuned, guys. I'll show you the second truck and how everything finishes up here. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Okay, guys, so we emptied the first truck. If you look in the background there, you got Big Rob there standing there. He's the driver for the first truck, the conveyor truck. And uh, the second truck, now once that truck's empty, you have to dump onto it with another truck. So you can see that front loader truck in the background. He's actually dumping his concrete load onto the conveyor so that um, Big Rob can work the concrete in. But if you look at this concrete now, guys, this is about a six slump. This is what we want right here. Um, this is concrete here is nice and workable, but it's going to maintain its strength. It's not super wet. It's going to dry really nice. Um, you're going to be able to keep up with it. That's how we like to pour our concrete at a five and a half to six slump. And uh, here we had to pull it into this corner. so And we want it a little bit workable so we can actually move it. Because we can't reach all the way into this corner, as you can see. So, um, me and uh, I think Tuna is going to jump in here in the blue shirt. He's going to help me hold the tremmy up and uh, try to, you know, sling that concrete into the corner. Because you can see we can't quite reach it right here. And Tuna comes in here, but he kind of kinked off the hose, as you can see. See it filling in, filling in, and then we'll just drop it. But I'll speed it up, guys. That's this is the second truck. Like I said, just pay attention you'll see the difference in these two trucks. This is how we wanted the whole job to be right here, but um, maybe I could have rejected that first truck, but in my opinion, that's just going to mess the whole job up. So sometimes you got to weigh out your options, and sometimes you're stuck. You know, what if you're in the middle of a pour and, you know, you don't like the concrete? What do you do? Do you, you know, maybe you guys can answer that down in the comments. Has this ever happened to you? Did you reject the concrete? Did it mess up the job? Because if you reject the concrete, you might end up with a pretty bad cold joint waiting for the concrete to come. And on this one, maybe I could have rejected that first truck. But what do you do with that concrete? Is it sitting in that conveyor truck? Because we needed that conveyor for the whole job. He stayed there. So, like I said, answer me down in the comments what you guys think about that. But right here, guys, pay attention. You can see the bleed water already starting to come out of that first load. See that shine on that concrete? That's the bleed water already starting to come out. And you'll see a big difference between the second load and that first load as this concrete starts to dry. And another problem this causes, see that power trowel sitting there? We got to get that power trowel onto this floor. So now we have wet concrete behind the dry concrete in the middle, the drier concrete. So I got to get across this wet concrete onto the dry concrete. So moving along guys, 
Right now, look at the concrete, the difference in the two loads to the right there. You can see the first load, how shiny and wet it is, and the second load. So now, you know, that just shows you what, what's going on. The, the rest of the concrete was good, guys, right until the end. And believe it or not, the last load was actually a little wetter than I'd like. But you'll see that. It wasn't terrible, but a little wetter than I like. The first load was the worst. Here I am, me and uh, guys putting in some wet pads here. Here's Matt and Mike. They're going to screed this off of the 16-footer. We're kind of leaving the area at the door open for the last truck. Usually the it'll dry fast at the door, guys, because that's where the sun shines in and you get some wind and stuff. So we left that open hole right at the door, you'll see here. And uh, we're just going to swing that um, chute back in. Kind of moving the camera around so you can see what's going on. Um, we're just raking everything off, um, puddling it down, and, uh, and hand screeding everything. That's how we did this one. We didn't use the power screed. If I got enough help, we'll just hand screed it, guys. But if we're short on help or it's kind of hot out, we'll use the power screed. It's a little faster. So we do both. Here, like I said, moving the camera around. You see we're just filling it in. This is good. This is a good slump right here. This concrete on this load is really good. Just what we wanted. Filling it in, filling it in. And then we're just going to have this last load here. You'll see where everything ended. Here comes our last load. Beautiful. Who is it? Sean right there. This is what we got left. We got plenty of mud on there. We got eight and a half yard left, so we'll have a couple of yards extra. Thank you, Daniel. We're gonna need all the screed shoots on there we can get, boys. Okay, guys, last truck. On this truck, I would have preferred about a five to five and a half tops on this last truck, slump-wise. That would kind of make it blend really nice. As you're finishing these floors, you got to pay attention to where your certain trucks were so that you can blend everything. So the quicker you can get the concrete in and the more, more consistent the slump is on each load, it's going to finish out a lot nicer. So that was a problem here. And you're going to see, you know, this concrete was probably a six and a half slump. So it was a little wetter than I wanted. I mean, it might even have been a seven slump. I'm not sure. I don't. I didn't check the slump on it, but you can see we've been doing this a long time. You can see it's a little wetter than I wanted for the last truck. And I want this to catch up to the rest of the floor. So, like I said, not as bad as that first truck. That first truck was terrible. Um, I guess there was a problem with the truck on the first truck. He was leaking water out the back of his truck. He had a, a broken hose, and evidently, because I called the concrete company, and uh, you know, I don't complain much, but I did did complain a little bit on this one. And I told them it made our day a lot harder than it needed to be. And like I said, it turns out that that first truck was messed up. The water was messed up, and I think it dumped a little extra water in there as he was traveling to the job. This last one, um, this driver said that this concrete was batched just like this at the plant. So that's on the plant. They, uh, they know how I like my concrete. They batched it a little bit wet on this last load for sure because uh, Sean said that this is how it came right out of the plant so he's a good driver he usually doesn't mess it up so you'll see here um, as we're going out here guys we're just dumping it out like usual and we're going to hand screed it you can see Matt there in the background he's kind of magging the two concretes together we're kind of just trying to blend it because the concrete the the fourth load there, fourth and third load, they're a little bit drier, obviously, than this. So we're kind of stomping it together and blending it and just trying to um, use our mags to kind of blend it together. And that's what it was, guys. That's, you know, let me know, like I said, what you think about it. Um, have you ever had this happen to you? What you did? How the floor turned out? I mean, this floor turned out pretty good for what we had to deal with. Um, but it just could have been a lot easier for us, um, less difficult, I like to say.
nothing we do here is easy guys my buddy Mike says that all the time nothing we do is easy so we like to say it would be less difficult if uh, the concrete was a nice consistent slump that would make things less difficult but we got it guys you'll see here at the end I got that Husqvarna soft cut saw so we cut it that day but I was able to cut it you can see that sheen right there guys that's that first load right there okay guys here she is I'm just gonna finish up one more pass in this front doorway but we actually cut everything with the Husqvarna soft cut Husqvarna soft cut saw there it is 40 by 60 I'll have Tuna video of me finishing up, shining out this last section. You can see it's not shined out yet. See how black that is, guys? You get up here. This part shined out, and this is where the last truck was. See the difference in it? So we're just going to let this sit probably 10, 15 more minutes, and then we're going to polish it up. And then it's beer 30.